in this kind of a recession, uh, with the challenges that the economy is bringing on from all different perspectives, it, it's, to be ex it's to be expected that you're going to have some delays. But I certainly think that the, the plan is a good one, and I think the, it might not get done as quickly as, as we'd like it, but I think that the resources are there, and we just have to keep looking at it from different perspectives, and you know, whether we need a larger loan from RIF or a, you know, other sources of capital, we just keep, keep pushing it. One of the things on my, I have a little list to learn uh, of things I need to, to get up on. And obviously, the notion of a smart grid is so captivating to so many people. Uh, it was very dismaying to read that you know, the, the budget, the, the cost was so significant that it didn't feel, it didn't seem like the efficiencies gained were going to compensate for the uh, expense of, of uh, implementation. You know, that's, that's daunting, to say the least. Uh, and, and what I really want to do is, is kind of roll up my sleeves and see where were the cost overruns, right? There's somebody at Excel who's going to be able to sit down with us at some point and explain these are where the cost overruns. If we had to do it over again, we wouldn't do these three things, but we'd still do these other seven things. And I think that's just because you, you don't succeed the first time doesn't mean you give up on the, on the vision. It means you have to regroup and refocus. I think the challenge when you're balancing a budget like we've been trying to do, the challenge is how do you balance those intensely competing needs that you recognize are crucially important. In the end, if you look at it, I mean, you know, we tried to protect higher ed as much as we could because we recognize it's part of the investment that gets the economy growing at a faster rate and protects us from lingering effects of a serious recession. Um, that being said, when you're, cut, when you're trying to cut $1.1 billion out of a state budget over two years, you're going to cut everything. Uh, you know, the notion that the, the actual numbers, when you look at all the sources of revenue for support of higher education, I don't think we're really 49th, but we're certainly in the bottom half. Um, there's a lot of different ways of measuring that. Um, but still, we should, be in, we should be in the top 10%, you know. Sure. Well, first, uh, uh, I talked to the CEO of ConocoPhillips about three weeks ago um, and just wanted him to know that I was every bit as committed as Governor Ritter was to making sure that they have all the support that they need in terms of planning this major ambition. And he reassured me that, that they have not backed away at all from you know, engaging at this level. Uh, but they are also looking at, you know, uh, within this recession, they might not implement as, as quickly as they had originally planned, which, again, I think is to be expected. Uh, in terms of the ACE Park, uh, I mean, that is right in the wheelhouse of what Colorado's core competency is, right? And, and certainly what Boulder's core competency is, right? begin looking at, at aerospace and, and some of the dyn dynamism that's around that and our existing infrastructure that already puts us in many, in many senses on the vanguard of those kinds of innovations. Uh, we'd be fools not to continue to invest and to make sure we get the best spot. I'm not going to pass judgment on what the best spot is. I think the uh, kind of the Boulder Broomfield, uh, what they used to call the high-tech corridor, um, is, is a great symbol of what all Colorado should be doing. There, there, there are incubators here. There is obviously a strong investment into higher education. There's a, a number of strong industrial clusters, whether you talk about technology or aerospace, um, organic food processing. Uh, I think what Boulder needs, that some of the challenges obviously are the rapid growth, especially around Boulder. Boulder's been pretty vigilant at, 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 at tempering the, the acceleration that, that some might expect. Um, but it hasn't diminished the growth around them. And that really does call into question the significance of fast tracks and, and how rapidly we can begin to connect uh, this whole region, uh, which allows, I think, greater growth and, and vitality in, with, with the, in the Boulder Broomfield area, but also 
I think, injects real energy into the rest of the metropolitan area and indeed the rest of the state. I mean, one, one of the things we really are focused on is how do we get high-speed internet all over the state, right? And to the uh, IBM folks up here helped us put together last, over the last year the EagleNet proposal to the Department of Commerce that uh, returned a $100 million investment that's going to help us get, you know, not the last mile, but the middle mile to, to get, get high-speed uh, uh, internet access to all 178 school districts. Once we begin doing that, then you begin to leverage all the assets that, that Boulder Broomfield has, and, and those assets become, become useful to the rest of the state as well. And there's no reason why Colorado should be one of the most highly and fluidly connected, in that tech, technological sense of the word, uh, states in the country. Should be, High-speed internet should be at every corner of the state.